Hi everyone, it's Emily and I'm back with another monthly pick its haul. So last month I actually didn't buy a whole lot of new games and I wasn't really searching for games at all online um, and that was mostly because of all the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom items that I bought. So I bought the OLED, the Pro Controller, as well as the Collector's Edition for Tears of the Kingdom. So that all added up to quite a lot. So I really tried to restrain myself from looking on different sites to continue growing my collection. Instead, last month I had a lot of pre-orders and games that I bought uh, ages ago come in. So I'll be sharing mostly those along with one new pickup that I did buy on sale. So I won't be talking too much about this one, but I did of course buy Tears of the Kingdom and I have the collector's edition up on my shelf there. So I'm just gonna show the case here. And I'm still not super far into this game. I've been kind of savoring my time with it and just really slowly exploring all of Hyrule and all the different new features they added into Tears of the Kingdom. So I can't really speak much about it, just know that I have been enjoying it. I've just been trying to prioritize a few other games, anticipating a release that's coming out next month. So I'll talk more about that soon. So the only other game that I purchased last month that wasn't a pre-order or anything was Valkyria Elysium. Uh, for the PS5. And so I bought this pretty heavily discounted and I had a few coupons for Best Buy. And I mostly bought this because I know this got rather mediocre reviews um, since they totally changed the gameplay aspect and it became an action RPG without too much of an interesting story or um, kind of character buildup. But I did want to try it. And I'll admit I mostly bought it because they also had the Steelbook, um, the pre-order Steelbook from Best Buy um, available. And it's a really beautiful Steelbook. I've been trying not to become a Steelbook collector, but this one was difficult to pass up, especially at the discounted price. Um, I think after coupons and everything, it was around $25 for free shipping. So I couldn't really pass that up and uh, I'm happy to add this to my PS5 collection. And speaking of the PS5, I have know I've been delaying actually purchasing a PS5. I've just been buying some of the games steeply discounted. But I think in the next week or so, I'm actually going to go to the store and pick one up. And the reason for that is because one of my most highly anticipated games for next month is going to be on the PS5. Um, so Trails into Reverie. So I ordered the PS5 version for that beautiful steelbook. And I just want to play the enhanced graphics version of that because I'm not too sure how that's going to perform on the Switch. I'm probably going to be buying the standard version of that game anyway, but I think for my first playthrough, I do want to experience that on the PS5. Now these next three games, I'm going to go through rather briefly because I already shared them on the channel. And that was during my big proxy haul where I kind of uh, shared some things I picked up from Japan, um, as well as talk about the things I learned um, in my first year on YouTube. This first game was the one I was most excited for, and that is Chrono Trigger for the Nintendo DS. And this is region free, and it also plays in English. So if you insert this into, for example, a North American DS or 3DS, um, it will automatically play in English. And I decided to go with this copy because I think after fees and everything, it was just around $25. So around $25 was definitely something I was willing to pay versus trying to hunt down something that wasn't over $100 here in North America. And so I do think the DS version is probably the definitive way to play Chrono Trigger nowadays because of all the new enhancements. I think they added some extra areas and maybe some new bosses or something. And I think they did a lot of name changes compared to the original NES and the PlayStation version. So I'm excited to finally dive into this game and finally get to experience this classic all the way through. And then the next two games are visual novels, with this first being a rather mature Otome visual novel. The title translates to Butterfly's Poison, a Poison Chain. This is set in a really cool time period, I think 1918 in Tokyo. And I really love the turn of the century historical time periods because we have a lot of more traditional historical elements um, influenced by Western culture and um, you're kind of starting to see things head towards the modern era. So like in most Otome novels, you play as the female lead and each different route in the visual novel um, is romancing a different male character. And I do hear a lot of the different routes are rather taboo. And there's some very dark things that happen, some kind of forbidden love and um, age gaps and kind of a lot of very 18 plus. Uh, routes. So I'm very curious um, because most of the visual novels I've played so far are kind of dark and moody, but not quite explicit or very kind of cute and fluffy. So I'm very curious how this one will go and I've heard really good things about the story characters and the world building. So 
um, eventually get to this one. And then the other visual novel is Clannad, which is a very popular visual novel series, um, has a lot of sliced life elements. And I think this is like 80 plus hours. There's a ton of routes and different girls you could romance and uh, different outcomes. And it is known to be quite the tearjerker. So uh, whenever I have a good chunk of time, I'll get to this one. All right, so now the next uh, nine or so games are all pre-orders that arrived last month. So I think in receiving just so many pre-orders that I placed months ago, just arrive all at once, has made me reflect a little bit about uh, me giving into FOMO and just how some of these purchases may not have been the right choice for me and building a curated collection. So I know it's really difficult with a lot of publishers that have a very limited time window and uh, like we see with, uh, for example, in the run games and uh, just how prices skyrocket after they release. And I think it's really easy to just give into that mentality that I should buy this now because otherwise I'm gonna have to pay a ton more down the road. I think there's a lot of kind of fear and um, I'm trying to avoid any sort of regret for not buying something when it's available. And just with so many different pre-orders and games coming out left and right, I think it's really easy to get distracted um, and trying to build um, a collection that you know that you'll get to enjoy and have time to play. Now, I'm definitely not perfect. I'm gonna probably fall into the FOMO trap once again, but I'm gonna try to be a bit more deliberate with which ones I do end up pre-ordering. And I'm really just focused on the specific genres I enjoy collecting and just doing a lot of heavy research to see if this is a game I'm actually going to enjoy and would regret not owning a physical copy of. So I guess not to mope a little bit too much about me kind of falling down this path that I know so many collectors have already. And I've definitely done this multiple times before in the past as well. But I think moments like these are kind of a good uh, check-in just to see if we're really happy with how we're going about building our collections and um, just making it something that we'll enjoy rather than just adding it to the stack on the shelf. I guess with all that said, I'll share what games came in last month. And the first one being one that I am glad I ordered. And um, I guess this might look familiar, but this is The Liar Princess and The Blind Prince. So I made a video a few months back when this initially got a re-release or a reprint from the NIS America website and how I successfully placed the order, but they sent me the PS4 version and I had to go through all this ordeal with customer service and sending back that game. Um, so if you want to check out that video, I'll have it linked in the description. But I'm just so glad Video Games Plus, who's based in Canada and ships worldwide, is initiating so many different reprints and re-releases. And I think they handle it a lot better, um, both with the logistics side of things and um, just the communication side as well than NAS America's shop does. I think NAS America especially, I'm not sure about um, their European locations and elsewhere. It's just having a lot of logistic problems with their games and sort of the timeline that they send out pre-orders and customer service. So I'm kind of glad they're taking a step back and letting Video Games Plus kind of fill in that role. With that said, I didn't mention this on my community post yesterday, but Video Games Plus is also initiating another NAS America reprint of the uh, out of print Trails games. So this includes um, Trails to Azure, which came out a couple months ago, but now is completely out of stock everywhere. And a lot of people are just asking outrageous prices for that, along with Trails from Zero and Trails of Cold Steel 4. Um, along with um, the Liar Princess and the Blind Prince, um, they also initiated Cold Steel 3 reprint. So I have no idea if NAS America is going to allow Video Games Plus to um, initiate more reprints for the Trails games. So I do recommend um, if you have an interest in owning these physically to buy them now. Um, but I think it's kind of sad how a lot of these companies are now kind of resorting to a print on demand approach. As we've seen with Trails to Azure, the game has only been out for a couple months and it's already out of stock everywhere. So I think companies like NAS America are just not printing a ton. And I'm not sure if that's because they're underestimating the demand for these games or if they just want to slowly push people towards uh, digital. But I don't know, I think it's a little concerning, but I'm glad that we at least have the option of these kind of print on demand services that places like Video Games Plus are providing. But anyway, I'm glad to finally have this game in my hands and the Switch version um, because it is a kind of a 2D side scroller action adventure game. And I think that just will Play really well on handheld, especially on the OLED screen. Um, this is developed by Nippon Nichi Software, 
And they have another game um, that I also have on the Switch. I have it up there. It's the Cruel King and the Great Hero. And so um, they have a very similar art style, but they do play rather differently. This one focuses more on platforming, um, exploring, and puzzles, while the other one um, is more turn-based combat. And I do hear uh, between the two, um, most people do prefer um, this first one that came out. This next game is one I added to my order to qualify for free shipping because I apparently, uh, whenever I get an option for free shipping, I will buy more in order to qualify for that, which I think is a trap in itself. But in this case, I'm, I'm glad I picked this game up um, because it's very um, well spoken of, and that is the Opius Collection. So this includes two games, The Day We Found Earth and Rocket of Whispers. And I believe there's a third game um, to complete the trilogy. But it's just these two are um, on physical. So this is a point and click uh, sci-fi space adventure that I hear the characters and the story and just the general atmosphere is wonderful. They incorporate a lot of visual novel elements into the narrative and it's really a compelling and beautiful story. And the one who really sold me on this game was the Kaseki Net, who uh, as many of you guys know is a huge Trails fan and really loves interesting and complex narratives and great characters. So his taste in games is very similar to mine, so I have a feeling I'll really love this as well. And yeah, I don't know if they're going to revise this collection to include the entire trilogy eventually. If they do, I'll probably pick that up because I do like having um, all the games on the cart. Um, it's going to be a complete cart version. But yeah, I feel like this is a little hidden gem that not enough people talk about, and I'm excited to try it out and kind of see if it lives up to the hype. So out of all of my pre-orders, those two games from Video Games Plus were definitely ones I didn't regret getting. Um, these next few, I do have uh, some kind of regret. I guess I'll sh share the next two. Um, so I ordered these off of Play Asia, and they're games that I feel like are going to be around for a while, so I really didn't need to order them when I did. But I did order the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster collection. So this contains the first six Final Fantasy games. And I definitely wanted this in my collection and I'm really glad that Play Asia had the Asian English option, um, whereas North America and um, I think Europe had a whole fiasco of trying to get a hold of uh, these physical games. So I think just like all the other Square Enix titles that is on Play Asia for the Asian English edition, we're gonna see Pixel Remaster just available, I think, for a long time as all those just keep getting reissues and reprints because of the demand. So yeah, I actually don't regret buying this physical copy because I do want this in my collection and I've never played the first six Final Fantasy games. So I feel like this would be a really good way to experience those. I just don't know when I'll have time to play these <laughs> um, given my huge backlog and especially a lot of RPGs I want to get through. And I'm also not sure if I want to play these in order or not. I have a feeling if I start with the first one, I might get burned out rather quickly. But then again, if I start with Final Fantasy VI, uh, which is one of the most highly regarded Final Fantasy games in the franchise, I feel like I would be starting at the top and be disappointed with the other ones. But yeah, uh, if you weren't aware that you can snack this on Play Asia and you wanted a physical copy of um, the Pixel Remasters, uh, then I'll have a link down below for those who are interested. So just like with Video Games Plus, I couldn't pass up the free shipping option where if you buy $99 worth of games, um, you'll have the free economy shipping. So I added Seabed to my order. So this is a Yuri uh, visual novel and I've never played a Yuri visual novel, so I'm intrigued. And I do hear um, the story and the characters are quite good in this one. Um, there's a lot of psychological kind of horror elements that um, they get into and I hear the concept it can be rather trippy, but it's really well done. And um, all the different various sprouts are interesting and um, really engages you. I will eventually get to this visual novel as well. Um, I've been adding quite a number of games to my visual novel pile that I'm gonna slowly work through. So like the previous two titles, um, these weren't ones I really regretted getting. It's more of, I don't feel like I needed to buy them right away because I think they're gonna be well stocked on Play Asia for quite some time. All right, so now we're on to the limited run game section here, which is I think where most of my regret came from um, because I feel like with our limited time window and just the aftermarket prices we've been seeing on so many of these titles, I felt like I needed to buy them at the moment, but uh, upon, I guess, further reflection, I do kind of question if I really needed some of these games and if I just kind of gave into FOMO and the hype um, when they were revealed. So this first game got a lot of hype and I'm really just a sucker for sci-fi and kind of cyberpunk 
themed games. So this is Anno um, Tationum, I think is how you say that. And this was one of the limited uh, print numbered, limited run games um, that came with uh, this trading card. So this is a game that I had some interest in. Um, I didn't look up too many reviews. I just saw some, a few different like five minute reviews and some gameplay footage. And I thought it looked fun and something different for me to try. And with the kind of limited window and being a numbered game, I felt like I had to buy it. <laughs> but I do like the use of pixel art throughout this game. And um, it is a side scrolling, I think shooting and slashing sort of game. Um, where you just battle hordes of different enemies all at once. So while this does sound like a really cool game, I do question whether or not it's going to be something I'll enjoy. And I do know a lot of people like to buy some of these limited print company games, uh, but the thought of they'll try it and if they don't like it, it should be easy to resell. And while I agree to that to an extent, I think a lot of the popular titles this might be easy uh, to do. I do feel kind of weird sometimes reselling things at higher prices just to recoup all the fees and um, just to get my money back. I know I've gotten a lot of comments in the past that reselling is really easy. Um, it's like no zero work or whatever. And I don't think that's really true. I do resell some other things, um, just not games. And uh, you have to kind of operate like a business. And there's so many different elements that could go wrong and things that might end up being more expensive than you anticipate. And a lot of different like time consuming things um, just to get your uh, storefront kind of up and running online and something that someone will like to purchase from. So I think while reselling um, some of these uh, more limited titles as a backup is maybe not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I just would prefer to avoid it altogether if possible. Next two games I decided to buy together to save a little bit on shipping, but honestly, it's only just saving a couple dollars. It's not that much. Um, the one that I was mostly interested in was this double pack of um, RFL and Rise of the Third Power. And so these are both a throwback to the 16-bit era of RPGs, with RFL described as an RPG that takes elements from the Japanese RPGs um, with the Western ones and kind of brings them together with some visual novel elements. And I, I do appreciate that they have bullet points of what these two games are about, because I'll admit I had to look up what these games were about before making this video. And I feel like whenever I have to do that, that's a sign that maybe I didn't really need to get this game since it's not something that I really am well versed on and I'm not really super eager to try out. RFL is supposedly known for its exploration, open world, tactical combat, and um, it's very character driven. Whereas Rise of the Third Power is leaning more heavily on the 16-bit um, SNS RPG era. And this one's supposed to have more political intrigue and very story driven. And um, there's some sort of custom battle system um, and persistent equipment. What that all means, I'm not entirely certain. So again, this is just a signal to me that I may have bought this due to FOMO rather than just general excitement for this collection. And I do feel like I do experience a lot of FOMO for um, kind of well-regarded indie titles. And um, these two are fairly well regarded, I think, especially Aerofell. So I did feel compelled to get this because they are RPGs and this is just a genre I really enjoy. But yeah, so this one, I'm a little bit torn. Uh, I feel like it's probably good that I picked this up because I don't really see it having another release. It might have another release maybe on another console. So for example, the Switch successor, maybe down the line, since they are pretty popular RPG indie titles. But on the other hand, I'm not sure where I'm gonna fit this in along with all the other RPGs that I have in my backlog. So I do feel rather mixed on getting this when I did. This next game is very top-down Zelda inspired, which is partly why I decided to pick it up. And that is Blossom Tales 2. I've heard nothing but good things about the first Blossom Tales. And the second one is supposed to be very similar to that one. I'm just with a new story element. But this one, I really didn't need to buy directly from limited run games because there is a retail version with a different cover that you could get. So I really didn't need to buy this now, um, having not played the first Blossom Tales game and with the retail version available. Um, it's possible that maybe the Asian release will have Blossom Tales 1 and 2 together eventually, like we've seen with um, some other games like Ripper City Girls. Yeah, I just kind of fell into the mindset that I need to put two games together um, to kind of save on shipping. So this is, I think, a mindset I need to kind of step away from because it just makes me buy more games than I really need to. Uh, with that said, I do think Blossom Tales 2 is probably a good pickup, uh, maybe the retail version rather than this one. I do think I 
enjoy the cover for this one a little bit more than the regular retail version. But again, um, it's not something I really needed to get right now. And these last two games are very Zelda inspired again. And I decided to go for the Ocean Horn box set. So um, it came with this little slipcase and you could get the first Ocean Horn game, um, which is very reminiscent of Top Down Zelda with a lot of um, different puzzle elements. And um, it was really popular when I think it first came out. I haven't heard too much about it recently, but I heard that this is a pretty enjoyable experience, especially if you enjoy some of the more traditional Zelda titles and Ocean Horn 2. So I ended up buying the box set because Limited Run, I think, released this before and this was the only way to get a hold of this copy again is if you bundled it with the second game. And the second game I hear it's a little bit more buggy in terms of um, some of the graphics and things. I don't know if they've patched this over since. Help please now, but that was what the initial reviews were saying that I looked up. And this one takes more of a, I think, a Ocarina of Time approach um, with a 3D graphics style. So I think I ordered these when there's a lot of Zelda hype and me wanting to get more games that were more like the traditional Zelda games since it seems like the Zelda franchise is veering more towards um, the Breath of the Wild open world approach, which don't get me wrong, I really enjoy, but I do miss some of the classic Zelda style games that I think the indie scene has done a good job at kind of rekindling and keeping alive. So again, this was another game that I did thoughtfully buy, but I just wonder whether or not I really need to own physical copies for both of these titles. And um, I do quite like the box set it came with, but it's just a very cheap cardboard slipcase. But yeah, these were all the games that came in last month. And as you can see, I was a little bit overwhelmed with all these pre-orders that I made uh, throughout all last year that were slowly trickling in all at the same time. And so I think that just helped me step back a little bit and kind of question how many of these pre-orders do I really need to initiate through some of these companies like Limited Run Games um, and some others. So I think moving forward, I do want to spend a lot of my hobby and game collecting funds towards some of the older titles on different systems rather than the Switch. Um, I love the Switch. I just feel like I have so many games for the Switch now. I think I'm approaching 200 now, which is a ton, and I've only played a small fraction of them. I really want to kind of, I think, reserve the last few games I pick up for the system for new games or ones that came out this past year that I haven't had a chance to pick up yet that um, are really kind of, I think, meaningful for that system itself, rather than just an indie title that might see a release. Um, on other systems in the future. And I think I mentioned this in my last pickups video that I do want to focus more on some of the retro game collecting scene. And I feel like just buying all these limited print company games has just been depleting from those funds. I want to try to shift my focus more on say the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, uh, PSP. Um, I still need to get some DS and Vita titles. So I just want to kind of fill out those handhelds a lot more. Um, and maybe dip into some PS2 territory if I'm feeling adventurous. So I've been actively just trying to stop following some of these accounts just so I'm not giving in to temptation. And I am following enough indie accounts from publishers and developers I really enjoy that um, if they do partner with one of these limited distribution companies, I'll know about it through their channels rather than um, through uh, those companies just advertising so many games all the time. So yeah, we'll see if I'm able to ease up from some of these uh, purchases and I'm shift my focus more to games that are kind of timeless classics that I really just want in my collection and to experience. So yeah, let me know what games that you picked up last month or are anticipating to get in the month of June. And also let me know if you have trouble when it comes to giving in to FOMO uh, for all these mid uh, distribution companies and uh, whether you have regrets of picking up some things that come uh, months down the line or just um, I guess what your thoughts and feelings are regarding some of these companies. But that's all for me. I, as I mentioned, will probably be doing a PS5 unboxing sometime soon and I'm talking about some upcoming PS5 games that I'm really excited for and eventually share some more retro finds that I'm really excited to start collecting that I've been wanting to for months now, but I think I'm finally ready to um, kind of focus more on those. So uh, until my next video, bye guys.